If you like the anime A Silent Voice or have read the manga for it, and you want something with a similar style, something with a hearing impaired character, but all grown up in a college setting, and honestly, the romance to this one seems like it's going to be absolutely a banger, you have to check out A Sign of Affection. There are currently two episodes out as of the recording of this video. It airs on Saturdays, and honestly, pleasantly surprised. Wholesome, sweetness, but there is a spice element to it. There is a bit of drama that's brewing in the background, and honestly, I'm here for this one. I 100% am. This show seems like it could very well become the most unique romance that we'll see potentially in the next couple anime seasons because we don't get a lot of hearing impaired characters to begin with, nor do we get them when we have like this very genuine like connection. So there is a love triangle in this show and before people write it off because there is a love triangle, it doesn't seem like that's going to be a bad thing. We do have the childhood friend dynamic with this character Oshi, who already knows sign language, picked it up for his friend Yuki, who is the main female in the show. And we have this like, this very pretty anime boy who travels the world and kind of like explores, who is named Itsumi, who basically, it seems like the main relationship right now is between Yuki and Itsumi, this kind of like, hey, I'm going to go explore the world. Here's this deaf girl who's felt very limited in life and now is fallen in love. And very clearly, the childhood friend has feelings for her. I think there's no arguing that fact. But what's interesting is while watching these two episodes build up and seeing that in the background, like, is it a love triangle? Is this just friends? Like, it's hard to tell. I'm like, no, it absolutely is. I don't feel like it's going to be drama as you normally see it. One of these two is going to have to give up. And honestly, I think it's still up in the air on who's going to have to give up eventually. Because very much, this could end up going the route of her saying, you know what? It's me, I very much have enjoyed this, but eventually it gets too overwhelming for her. But he also seems like the kind of guy who would slow it down and make sure she's comfortable. So it seems like childhood friend over here might not make it out alive, but it's hard to say exactly. All I know is watching a show that treats her, her hearing impairment not as a gimmick, not as a joke, but just the way they go about exploring it, the sign language and how it's actually sign language animation. They're not just randomly moving their hands around like this is how you would sign in real life. It's just so great to see something that has that adult aesthetic to it, that adult setting, but it has such a wholesome vibe to it where you can also see how there could be a little spice, but not to the point that it's going to ruin it. And if anything, I think the thing that it makes me think of the most is anyone who saw Loving yamada -kun, from I think it was last year, there was a love triangle there and they handled that so well without too much drama and that's kind of the vibe I'm getting here but I guess only time will tell. Now I do have a full live reactions to both episodes 1 and 2 of A Sign of Affection over on my Patreon so if you would like to see those, they're over there if you're interested. Now this was one that's actually been pretty heavily requested. Am I going to cover it every week on YouTube? No idea. Am I going to cover it every week on Patreon? Absolutely because I love it. But this is a show that it airs on Saturday, there's too much already airing on Saturday and I don't want to do a fourth video. So we'll try it on Sundays, and if the demand's there, if the popularity's there, we will keep up with it here as well. Or maybe I'll try to double video it. I don't know exactly just yet. All I'm saying is if you want me to keep talking about this one, you gotta show the love in the comments, smash that like, all that fun stuff. I don't think this show's gonna do well on my channel. Prove me wrong. Make this one of the most popular. I'm not gonna be complaining. I just gotta be honest. Now, Yuki as a character is sweet as hell. She is a cinnamon roll. She is precious. She's Anya from Spy Family all grown up but on a peaceful path instead of that assassin path. Like, she just is so sweet and so adorable, and I love how her introduction to her hearing impairment, because I didn't read the synopsis of this one. I literally knew nothing. I just had people request it, and I heard it was cute. So I said, sure, I'll check that out. First scene on the train, basically, you don't know what's going on. She's just kind of looking out. There's very clearly a foreigner who's trying to basically figure out where, where do we go, where am I going for this or that, and she can't hear. And I love the idea of the intro because it just immediately sets the stage like, oh, okay, we're going to be dealing with a hearing impaired character, and it'll be interesting to see what type of struggle she has or this or that. But it never really goes too overboard. Like, it doesn't go the bullying angle. It doesn't go anything too crazy. And I like that by episode two, we see what type of life she lived, and it was a very closed off life, a very peaceful life, but a very limited life, all things considered. She went to a school that from the very beginning all the way throughout high school, she had like four people in her age grade because they also suffered the same disability, right? And while it was very pleasant seemingly, and she got along with the people and it was nice, she had that vision of going and exploring a bigger and brighter world. And then that's where our boy Itsumi comes in, 
because he's someone who does travel a lot. He just casually, one day at college, he's like, hey, I'm going to this place. And she's like, I don't even know where that is, but okay. And then she gets these pictures of him just traveling the world. He's like, yeah, I'll be back to school on Monday. It's like, that is the type of life that she's envisioned, but she's very scared to take that step up. And you can see how a person like him would very much be good for her in terms of opening up her world showing her things that are bigger than just, okay, here's your daily routine. Some people yearn for that, but you could also see how that could get overwhelming for her. And that's the thing that I'm really interested in. But I think the fact that we've already seen enough subtle signs about him that he doesn't feel like the type of person to just like, it's my way or the highway. He's went out of his way to already start picking up sign language, which is something that clearly the childhood friend also did and has mastered over the years. But the fact that, you know, while they both give each other death glares over the course of this episode, or episode two that is, I like the fact that it's very clear that both of them care about her. And she, I think was the most interesting thing about her character, she didn't immediately think she was in love, and she didn't immediately brush it off either. She basically, with her friend, was saying like, I don't know if this is a crush, I don't know if this is love, but I'm fascinated by it. But she was embarrassed, she was kind of shut off, because that clearly was a first for her. And by the end of episode two, she does the little heart, and it's very clear that she's saying that she feels in love with him. Obviously, if there's two guys going after the same girl, or two girls after the same guy, someone's heart's getting broke. But the thing about love triangles is they don't have to be bad. Because here's the thing, if you naturally, even if you don't have a friend group, but let's just use a friend group, right? Whether you're in school, whether you're in work, it's almost guaranteed there's going to be two people who are interested in the same person at some point or another, right? The thing is, is if, like, the way you handle that in terms of, like, okay, she or he likes them, move on with your fucking life. That's, that's the solution there, right? Like, very clearly, you don't wait around, you don't try to break them up, that's the healthy way to go about it. A lot of times, people don't do that. And when I don't enjoy love triangles is when it's too toxic, or the toxic storytelling is just so ham-fisted. But I don't feel like that's what they're gonna do. I do feel like there'll be spice between these two, but I don't think it's gonna be insufferable. That's my gut feeling. And it'll be very interesting to see, because if they go the route of just immediately backing off, which I don't think is going to happen. I think there will be a little spice. It'll be interesting to see, but I think if a show could handle a love triangle, I think it's this one. And I think if anyone tries to tell me there isn't a love triangle, you're absolutely kidding yourselves. They both very much like her. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Episode one alone, I was not committed to it being a love triangle. I was thinking it could just be a concerned childhood friend. Episode two seals a deal that no, it is. It, it is. Whether you like love triangles or not, this 100% has one. I'm probably going to need a map at some point because it seems like there's going to be a lot of characters. And her childhood friend already has like this female friend when he basically helps him. Which honestly, they did a great job with Oshi. I, the fact that he seems good as well, he's just a little more, he's a little more uptight. There's this deaf guy who walks through the gate and doesn't pay. And he stops him and says, hey bro, like you should go pay. You don't want to be treated as like a criminal. And just like, it was a very sweet moment. It shows like what type of person he is. Or the fact that when her friend is basically sneaking up on her, he says, hey, she can't hear footsteps. Don't startle her. There's a lot of very subtle signs that he's also a genuine guy. It's like, oh man, you don't want either one of these guys to be heartbroken, but one of them definitely will be. But basically the point is, we don't know who's going to end up winning or ending up in a relationship. But I think one thing's for sure is they're not going to treat her hearing impairment as a gimmick or a gag, but rather it's a part of her. It'll be interesting to see how people's lives will be open up because, you know, obviously she just can't talk with people. There's a lot more limitations, but how she still navigates this big, beautiful world while he simultaneously shows her that big, beautiful world. But most importantly, the different character pairings, because there's a lot of characters and I feel like a lot of people of who's going to like who, but that's reality. That's life for you and we're in a college setting so it's easier to take it a bit more seriously than when it is a high school when you know most of these relationships aren't going to last past the next year anyway either way this was a great debut of episodes one and two if you want me to keep covering it on the channel definitely let me know down below and also let me know your feelings on either episodes one and two down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here of course ring that bell so you get notified when i upload more of the channel and like i mentioned we have a full live reaction over on my patreon and hey while you're over there you also get a video shout out all right so today we have valorix adam dundorf JD and Thor Linsgard. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care. Have a good one.